I would say that there are uh, three different forces coming together that pose significant challenges uh, to the college completion agenda and to community colleges in particular. Uh, first is uh, that, the, uh, that the skills that are required in the, uh, in the economy uh, in the United States continue to rise. Gradually, inexorably, skills, uh, skill needs and demands from employers are, are rising. So the, the, uh, the need for post-secondary uh, education, training, and credentials just continues to rise. Second, the, um, the fiscal situation of states, colleges, uh, and the nation generally uh, adds a second challenge, which is if we need to do more to raise the skills of the American workforce and skills of students coming out of high school or adults coming back for, for more training, where are we going to get the resources to do that and to do it better than we've ever done it in the past? And third is the demographic challenge, which is that the composition of the workforce, the composition of the American uh, student body, the American public is changing in ways that add, add further challenges as more first-generation college-goers uh, uh, start looking to, for post-secondary credentials and uh, to enter the workforce in a, at a different level than, than in the past. And those three things together pose a significant challenge. The big change that I think Achieving the Dream has uh, been part of and in some ways uh, both accelerated and, um, and helped sharpen is the sense that we need to move from access to higher education to success in higher education and so it's not enough uh, to do what we did for 30, 40 years and made great strides of getting more and more people um, into post-secondary learning. Uh, the key is to get them out of post-secondary learning with credentials that have value in the labor market and to uh, help them uh, make the choices and you know, make career choices that are both uh, good for them and their families but also you know, good for the regional economy in which they live. I think where you see a lot of state activity around uh, the completion agenda, particularly uh, state policy work, you see it in a number of areas. One is the uh, dramatic uh, changes in, many, in a number of states in how developmental ed policy is, uh, um, is organized and, and, what the, uh, and how states plan to deliver and to improve outcomes in uh, developmental education. I think, you know, if you went back even 10 years ago, people would say, yes, developmental education is a problem, but there wouldn't be a sense either partly at the college level, but, certain, and, but also at the state level. Well, so what are the levers to, uh, uh, to improve outcomes for students who come into college needing some kind of remediation, and needing some kind of basic skills? And you've seen in states like Virginia, North Carolina, uh, really dramatic and creative uh, uh, efforts to restructure developmental education so that students are able to move through more quickly, be placed more efficiently and effectively, and uh, where possible moved, uh, where possible they, they can avoid going into developmental education and get the basic skills they need built into the program of study that they're involved in. And figuring out how to uh, deal with, uh, first of all to make transparent but then also to uh, encourage and create incentives for colleges to uh, do a better job of moving people more quickly and more effectively into the, uh, into the programs that, that they're actually there for, and to do that in a way that is uh, uh, where they get enough support to succeed in those programs. I think states are making progress on that. It's hard, it's slow, it's hard in the, in the environment uh, in, again, in the fiscal environment, but there's a great amount of energy and will, I think, at the state level to, um, to tackle these issues. I think the other thing that is happening at the state level is a sense that community college uh, student success and uh, higher education policy in general needs to be better aligned with economic development that this is really about 
not what happens in college, but it's what happens to students when they get out of college and what choices they're going to have, what choices they're going to be able to make, were they in the right program. Uh, and <coughs> focusing on the economic development needs of the region in which a college is located is something that you know, governors understand that language, Legislate, legislators understand that uh, set of priorities. And that makes a big difference in the way states are now looking at their higher education investments and in institutions. What's special about Achieving the Dream is that this is an initiative that has some of a large number of some of the most innovative colleges in the country coming together around a common set of goals, common set of metrics, common understanding of what the problem is and what the solution set uh, should be, and it's a real asset achieving uh, the dream that you have over a hundred uh, colleges that are working together that see themselves as part of a movement towards improving student success and completion. Um, and so over the years uh, that achieving the dream has evolved from a demonstration project into an organization uh, and into a, in effect a, a movement it really has helped shape the, uh, the terms of the discussion in colleges, among the college leaders, uh, at the state level, and, and, and broadly about both the possibility of community colleges and also the challenges they face and, the sol and, the, and even more important, the solution set that, uh, that can make a difference to the increasing, dramatically increasing completion.